Hi and welcome to my video on my top 5 gluteus medius exercises. I'm Yasmin Say, I'm founder and owner of Say Fitness Personal Training. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this one. Okay, let's get started. So why do we need to strengthen the gluteus medius? Well, it's a really important muscle as part of our glutes. The reason being is that it helps stabilize and strengthen our femur and our pelvis. Why is that important? Well, it's important to stabilize and strengthen our posture, our stance, and also our gait. So the first exercise we're going to do from standing does require a glute loop band like this one. Now you might have a fabric one or a latex one, but if you don't, you can also find that this exercise is quite effective anyway. So starting from standing, you're gonna pop the band on just above your thighs. Now it's a good idea just to stabilize your standing position to be able to hold onto a wall or an object next to you. Starting here, bringing the feet about hip width apart, standing nice and tall, engaging your core, and as you abduct, so A, B, duct the leg away from your stabilizing leg here. We want a soft bend in the knee of the stabilizing leg, and you want to make sure that you are directly lifting the leg to the side. So there's no chance of that external rotation through the hip. So lifting and lowering. And because we're working with body weight here, we can afford to go higher reps. So you're going to do, let's say, up to 20 reps on this side before changing over. You can do the similar exercise to what I just showed you from side lying. So this is a side lying single leg abduction, abduction. So you set yourself up in a modified side plank position. Shoulder over your elbow here. Your bottom knee is down on the ground. Hike the hips up, engaging your core here. My body is facing forward and I extend my top leg. As I exhale, I'm lifting that top leg about to hip height where I start to feel it in that glute meat and then tapping down. As I exhale, I lift and then down. Now my best advice with this, and it's a little bit of trial and error, but you might want to play around with either pointing the foot or flexing. You might feel it slightly different in each position here. So find the way that works best for you. And again, you're looking for up to 20 reps on each side. The next exercise is the single leg deadlift. Now it's getting a little bit trickier now with these exercises because a single leg deadlift requires a bit of coordination and of course it helps strengthen your balance. So you're going to start with your feet hip width apart. Let's start with the right leg. So I'm going to stabilize into my right leg, making sure there's a soft bend in the knee of my right leg here. I'm gonna break at the hips first. So I want to keep my pelvis in neutral here. And as I hinge forward, I'm extending that left leg back nice and strong. I get to about sort of that tabletop position here. And then as I exhale, I use my core to draw myself back up to center. So as I inhale, I'm extending that left leg back nice and strong. If I float it, then I'm definitely going to be in danger of losing my balance. So I really want to make sure I'm utilizing my core here getting that leg nice and strong so I feel stable in this position and as I draw myself slowly back to center. For here, we're looking for, let's say, 10 reps in total before you switch to the other side and I would go for around three sets in total. A way of progressing the single leg deadlift, you can add a load. You can add a bit of resistance in the form of a kettlebell or a dumbbell. You can either bring it into the same arm as the stabilizing standing leg here, hinging forward and then coming up. So I'm loading that stabilizing leg a little bit more. Or if you're still working on the balance element, bring it into the opposite arm. So from here, I'm a little bit more balanced throughout the exercise. For the next exercise, I'm going to show you two versions again, one from standing and one from all fours. The one from standing is our crab walk. So you're bringing that glute loop band just around your thighs, just above your knees. Of course, you can do this exercise without the band as well. 
you're going to hinge back sitting into a semi squat here. So I'm sitting back, weight goes into the heels, keeping my chest up, core nice and tight. From here, I'm going to side step alongside my mat and all the way back to the other side. Now the important thing here is I don't want any of that external rotation. I'm keeping my feet nice and parallel. So I'm keeping that lovely tension in the band. That's why it's quite beneficial using a glute loop band or any type of a resistance band you have as you sidestep. Try and resist coming up to standing. You want to keep that time under tension. So again, you could do an exercise like this timed. So maybe start with 30 seconds, take a little pause and then build it up to 45 seconds or a minute. Coming down to all fours now, similar exercise, but on all fours, the fire hydrants. Shoulders stacked over your wrists, hips over knees. From here, without leaning over onto my opposite side or bending my elbows, so I'm keeping very neutral here. As I exhale, I'm lifting the working leg out to the side. So I'm being very mindful not to compensate by shifting my weight onto the right side in order to get that left knee and left leg any higher. I definitely feel the resistance from the band. Again, of course, you don't have to use the band here, but I'm very mindful of keeping my core engaged and that pelvis in neutral. Rep ranges, again, you can afford to go 15 to 20 reps on each side and go for three sets. Clamshells are the next exercise. You may have heard of these before. It's a very popular Pilates exercise, but when done well in the correct setup. So coming down onto your side, you can lie down onto your arm here or rest your head into your hand. More importantly is your side lying set up here. Imagine you are lined up against the wall behind you, the back of the head, the back of the rib cage, the back of the hips and the heels are in that line. So those are your touch points. I'm using a band here. Again, you don't have to use a band if you don't have one, that's fine. Bringing your hand on your top hip here, lengthen the side of the waist. So you want to keep in a neutral position here. I don't want to be sort of slouched here with my lower waist area here, just slouching and touching the ground. So I lengthen the top hip away and it creates that little pocket of air underneath my waist. Now I know I will be using my core at the same time. The other thing that is also quite important, which isn't often mentioned with the clamshell, is to draw the hip slightly forward. There is a tendency when going into this exercise of external rotation. So not only do I draw the hip away, I bring the hip slightly forward. So my top hip forward might not be the case for you necessarily, but again, everyone's body types are different. So just to be aware of that point. Now I keep my hand in position and I draw the top knee up and then down. Now there's two ways of making this a little bit harder or really getting that mind muscle connection is one, not only bringing the hand to the hip here, but two, making sure that there's a pause at the top. There's a pause at the top of the movement. I want to be able to feel that glute engage before lowering it down. If I go too fast, I'm in danger of really not working that glute, gluteus medius as much as I'd like. Keep the feet closed together here. And then again, rep ranges, you can go 15 to 20 before changing on the other side. For the last two exercises, you will require a low step or a low box of some sort. Now the first exercise I'm gonna take you through will be the pelvic drop, and then I'm gonna show you a progression for that exercise. So I'm gonna stand using my right leg very close to the side edge of my step here going to bring my hands to the sides of my hips for a little bit of stabilization, soft bend in my right knee. And then as I drop that left hip down towards the ground, I'm going to squeeze into that right glute as I draw my pelvis back to neutral. So I'm dropping down and then coming back to neutral. Now for this exercise, I want you to go really slow and steady, really feel the movement and the quality of movement. So I would suggest maybe 10 reps 
before switching over to the other side and then going for three sets in total. And the progression of that exercise would be a single leg squat. Now again, I'm going to use the same height for my step here, standing up again on that right leg. And here now requires a little bit of a deeper bend into my right knee. So as I sit the hips backwards into my squat position, I squeeze up coming back to my standing position. So I break at the hips, weight back into that right heel, feel that engage through the glute here, and then really press the foot into the step to come back into standing. Again, very slow and steady here. It's more about the control and quality of the movement. I would repeat 10 reps on one side before changing over and three sets in total. I hope you enjoyed those exercises and you found them useful. Please comment below with any questions that you have and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you on the mat soon.